Working in cybersecurity is perceived to be one of the most coolest professions because we get our idea from movies and TV shows where you see this one person sitting in a dark room with RGB lit keyboards and CPUs frantically banging at their keyboards and after a couple of seconds you'll see them shouting I'm in to suggest that they've successfully hacked a device or a network. But hey, let me burst that bubble for you and pull you out of it because working in security, cyber security or network security is absolutely nowhere near that. In this video, I'm going to share with you five harsh realities of working in the security domain. So let's dive straight in. Before we go any further guys, I would really like you to hit the subscribe button. Please make sure that you also hit the like button on this video and check my previous content out as well. Cybersecurity is a profession which is on the rise and over the past two to three years, you have a lot of individuals that are highly motivated to get into the field of security. But before you get in, it's very important that along with all of the glam that you see around cybersecurity, it's also important that you know what exactly are the truths associated with working in the security domain. And the first harsh reality is there is little to no room to make any errors. Reason being when you're working in security, it's highly possible that the company you're working for has sensitive data. And if there is any chance of a breach or an attack taking place, well, that can lead to a loss of millions of dollars. If you look at the hacks that have taken place over the last two to three years, you will see that there's a very heavy ransom that's associated with the data that has been stolen. Hence, cybersecurity professionals are always under the pump to make sure that they don't leave any stone unturned when it comes to ensuring strong security standards so that no breaches ever take place with their organization. For example, if you're a network security engineer and you leave any ports open, there's a very high chance that there is a hacker sitting somewhere constantly sniffing your network and they use these open ports as a backdoor to ultimately infiltrate your network and steal data. Hence, as I said, there is a constant pressure that you shouldn't get things wrong. Now, when you're working as a junior security engineer, yes, obviously making mistakes leads you to become more successful in the field because you learn from your mistakes. And when you're working in a more junior role, you will have your seniors that will ensure that you don't have the necessary privileges to make such big errors. But as you advance in the field, you're not going to be a junior anymore. And hence the onus is on you to ensure that you follow good security standards. The second one is the constant need to study. Speaking about myself from personal experience, I have been working for about three years in the tech domain, primarily as a network engineer and then ultimately transitioned into security. And I hold six certifications. So that's about two certifications every year. But hey, that's not it. That involves watching video lectures, practicing um, online tests, simulations, labs, etc. Therefore, there's constant studying if you want to get that edge as a cybersecurity professional. If you're looking to get a better job in the cybersecurity industry as well, most of the job descriptions out there do require certain industry recognized certifications. And hence, even if you are someone who doesn't believe in giving certification exams, ultimately, you will still have to study the courses to have them on your resume and with some certifications, let me be completely honest with you, it's highly desirable that you have it on your resume. Therefore, that constant study and constant learning is something that's going absolutely nowhere. The third reality is maintaining a fine balance between security and usability. Now, you must be thinking, what exactly does this point mean? Well, let me explain it to you. If you're working for an organization and you have to maintain security standards for that company, well, you've also got to ensure that other users are not impacted because of these stringent security measures. Now, as a cybersecurity professional, right, we are absolutely paranoid when it comes to having any security in any enterprise organization or network. And if you're watching this video, you will possibly resonate with what I'm saying. You absolutely follow the principle of least privilege, which means that a user will get access to only those things that they absolutely need access to. But somewhere, this hampers usability and the day-to-day -day functioning of a normal user, let's say working in finance or marketing, they will be affected by your stringent security 
methods. Hence, there is a lot of back and forth with these stakeholders being other employees of your organizations or other stakeholders for that matter, where it ultimately leads to a lot of roadblocks and a lot of conversations wherein you've got to find a good balance between how much security you need to deploy versus how you let the normal functioning of the organization take place. And trust me, this can get draining at times because that constant communication with stakeholders, asking them what they need access to, what ports they need open, etc., is a very tedious job. The fourth one, and possibly something that I hate the most, is unpredictable and long working hours. Yes, if you want to have that good balance between your work and your life, Look, you can absolutely achieve that within security, cybersecurity, network security, even network engineering for that matter. I'm, I'm not saying that it's not possible, but there are times when you will have to put in that extra effort and work at random hours of the day or the night. I'll give you an example. Let's say if I am working on a project to upgrade network security devices like firewalls or intrusion detection systems or intrusion prevention systems, it's highly important that I do this only at a time when there aren't any active users on the network and most of the times that's during the night or during weekends when there aren't a lot of users that are active on the network hence this results in a lot of long hours and unpredictable time slots that you've got to devote yourself to work and the last one is mental fatigue and burnout this is caused by the previous four points wherein the constant pressure to not make any mistakes the constant need to study and upskill yourself, the constant need of um, providing a good balance between security and usability, and finally, the constant need to work those unprecedented hours and timings can lead to burnout in an individual. And this is something that you possibly cannot avoid as a cybersecurity professional. It's not just as I started the video where, you know, you have a person just clicking a couple of keys on their keyboard and boom, you've achieved success. No, it's absolutely not that. It is a culmination of all of the four points, which ultimately leads to a sense of fatigue in you. And in the long run, it's definitely not good. Now, look, uh, every tech field is similar to this. I'm not saying that, you know, it's only within cybersecurity or it's only within network security, but it's a lot more relevant to fields like this. Therefore, if you're someone who doesn't know how to draw that line, between maintaining a good work-life balance and you somehow get lost into your work and you don't know when you pull yourself out, this profession may not suit you the most. So there we go. These were five points that I encountered and I wish someone had told me about them earlier before I got into the profession. Not to say that I don't enjoy what I do or I don't love what I do. I absolutely admire the field that I'm working in. But every good thing also has a few dark shades to them and these are the few harsh realities of working in security if you found this video helpful i would really like you to comment what you think about the video and add any points that you think i've missed out or even let me know if you absolutely don't agree with anything that i've said in this video as always guys if you've liked the video do subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video